Hello fellow seamsters. This video is going to be a continuation of a series I'm calling Bag Making Basics. Today I'm going to tell you everything about zippers. Okay, I'm definitely not going to tell you everything about zippers, but I'm going to tell you about the zipper that I use the most, maybe a couple of zippers that I use, why I use them, how to use them, uh, and hopefully give you some insights on what might be the best choice for your project. I just want to emphasize I'm specifically talking about making things like duffel bags and you know backpacks like this one has a uh, laptop compartment uh, some of what i'm talking about could be applied to the zipper of a pair of pants you're making but some of it not so just understand this is specifically about making bags in kind of a particular category of bags Anyway, if you like what I'm doing here, clicking like is always nice, and uh, subscribe so you can check out more. So you can buy zipper in a number of ways. You can buy pre-cut and assembled sections of zipper with the slider already on it. Uh, this one, this is a separating zipper. Oh wait, what is this? Yeah, this is a separating zipper. And if you were to purchase a section of zipper like this, if you were to find this on sale at a fabric store or something, you could use this in a project, uh, but it's not necessarily ideal. The majority of the zipper that I use in my projects came on this roll when I bought it. There was about 100 yards of number eight YKK continuous coil zipper. I'll explain more about that in a little bit. And uh, so partly because I ended up with this roll at a really, really good price, that's what I've used the most. This is the zipper that I would be using anyway. It just happened that I got lucky and was able to buy a large roll of it. Uh, I'll put a link in the corner if you want to check out the story of how I ended up with this and the rolls of fabric or what's left of it back there on the wall. So uh, if you are looking to buy zipper for your project and you're making the kinds of bags that I'm talking about here, one way to buy this zipper is by the foot or by the yard, depending on how the seller sells it. And then you can add your sliders and sew it with zipper stops if you need or zipper tabs. There's a couple of different ways to finish off the ends. Usually, if, if you've not bought zipper before and you don't know where to look, just about every online fabric retailer sells zipper. It's usually found under the category of narrow goods. So if they don't have a, a heading uh, you know, in their menu for zipper specifically, look for narrow goods and that's usually where you'll find zipper. As I said, this is YKK continuous coil zipper. Uh, it's number eight. So let's talk about the continuous coil first. All that means it's just a metal coil tooth as opposed to something like these Vislon. Uh, let's see if I can get a shot of this. This is Vislon or something like it, nylon teeth. You might also encounter metal tooth zippers. There's probably other variations that I'm not thinking of, but the continuous coil is kind of a coils of wire on each side that interlace. I said this is number eight. What that means is that the width of the coils or teeth is eight millimeters. You can also get it in number 10 or 10 millimeters. I think I've got some number five somewhere in here. That's eight. Yeah, there's some five. You probably won't be able to see the difference. Uh, a couple millimeters isn't that big of a deal. So number eight I like because it is big and robust enough for the main opening compartment of something like a backpack, but it's not excessively large or heavy. If I were making ultralight backpacking gear, I'd probably use number five or maybe even number three, depending on what the zipper opening was for, how much abuse it might take. But for general purpose stuff, I really like number eight and I'm gonna show you some examples of why. So this is a duffel bag that I made using two rows of number eight and I can rip it open and rip it close. No, rip it close doesn't make sense, but you get the idea. Um, it's nice and robust. I also use number eight for the side mesh pocket. And even though it's, it's big and robust enough for this main opening, it's not absurdly large for this side pocket. 
Similarly, I, I make these uh, water bottle carriers for when I'm running, and it has a pocket that has number eight. And again, it's, you know, I don't find number eight to be too big to use for this purpose. It doesn't look out of place and it functions very, very well. Uh, let me point something out about this. I'll probably bring this up again later, but since I'm here, this has the smooth side of the zipper showing as opposed to the teeth or the coils showing. And the zipper is exactly the same. The only thing that is different is this has a reversed slider on it. So if you want the look of smooth uh, zipper tape showing, you don't have to buy a special zipper coil or you know the actual zipper itself. You just have to buy a different slider. On the same note, this pack, this is actually number 10. Um, and I, when I made this pack, I, I think I commented in that video, I really didn't want to use number 10, but that was the only water resistant zipper that I had. And it's actually been quite good, uh, but normally I would probably prefer number eight. Uh, quick note on water resistant zipper. I think YKK's name for it is AquaGuard. If you want the look of the smooth side out, same thing, you just use the reverse zipper slider. I think that's how they're intended to be. I don't know if they're less water resistant with the coils out or not, but this is how it's usually done. And I'm being careful to say water resistant. These are not waterproof. If you stick this bag underwater, water will get in, but you know, it's good for shedding rain and you know, light water applications. Um, so, but anyway, that's number 10 on this bag. My phone carrier here has number eight AquaGuard. I also use number eight AquaGuard as the main opening on this backpack I made a while back. And my only concern about AquaGuard is that it tends to be slightly less smooth to open and close compared to the non-AquaGuard. So you really have to decide how important it is to you to have the additional protection of an AquaGuard zipper versus how smoothly you want the bag to open. So, for example, on, on this pack, it's not really intended to be out in the weather as much, and I wanted it to open and close quickly. That was more of a priority, so I did not use AquaGuard zippers for this opening. However, for the laptop opening for my everyday carry pack, I want it to be as water resistant as possible because I never know if I might be out on foot, you know, in a city somewhere and have my my laptop with me when I'm traveling and uh, I don't want it to get wet. So let's talk about sliders. When you buy uh, a length of zipper, uh, not an assembled zipper, you'll have to buy sliders for your zipper to work. And these can be a little bit confusing. When I was first starting out, I used to struggle. I'd try to put the wrong size slider on, or I had some reversed sliders or inverted sliders that I didn't realize that's what they were. And I tried and tried and tried to put them on and they wouldn't work because I was putting them on upside down. So I have two number eight sliders here. Uh, I think these are both YKK, they are. Um, you can see that one has a longer pull tab than the other. And that's just, this one happens to come with a longer tab. You can order them uh, often depending on your supplier. You can order them with a shorter tab or longer tab. And you can just cut those off and use paracord instead or, or there's lots of different zipper pull options. Um, so these look, other than the length of the, geez, I should have worn a white shirt today. <laughs> other than the length of the tab, these look pretty much identical. Uh, one of them is marked, I really don't know that I'm gonna be able to get this in focus, let me see. So hopefully you can see this one says 8C right here. And that means number eight size and C for coil, I believe. And this one, which is a, also a number eight coil, doesn't have anything marked on it. And they're both YKK. I don't know why one is marked and one is not. But you might notice that this one the, the longer side or, the, you know, the side that is able to accommodate the teeth is on top. And on this one, it's on the bottom. So you can see that lip here on the side. Let's see if I can get these side by side and show you. So this one is for having the coil teeth facing outside. And this one is for having the smooth side facing out or the reverse coil look.
the most important thing I can convey to you about sliders is things. The most important the most important things I can convey to you about zipper sliders is you have to have the right type of slider so you can't use a slider you can't use a slider for the plastic teeth on a metal coil zipper. It has to be the right type and it has to be the right size. You can't use number 10 zipper slider on a number 8 zipper. You might be able to get it on, but it's not gonna work. And also you need to know if you want it to be an inverted zipper or you know, the coil side out zipper. What I would recommend is that you make those decisions uh, as far as the inverted part uh, when you're ordering zipper and either order some of each if you wanna order a lot of zipper and a lot of sliders and have options for future projects uh, or just, you know, pick the one you need for your project. And then uh, if you do order, you know, some of each, try to keep them organized. Uh, same with sizes. If you have uh, a quantity of number five zipper and number five sliders and also number eight zipper and number eight sliders, uh, especially until you get really familiar with it, good idea to like keep them segregated and marked in some way so you know which one is which, just to save yourself some frustration in trying to put the wrong, wrong slider on. Um, once you get good at putting the sliders on, you pretty no, much know right away you're doing something wrong because it'll be difficult. But the important thing is make sure you have the right size slider and the right type of slider for the zipper that you're using. So let's talk about putting a slider on. If you are new to sewing with zippers, that probably seems terrifying to you. It did to me when I first started. Like, How am I going to get this back together and it be straight? It's not a big deal at all. So I've got my reversed coil slider. No, let's do the regular one. I'll start with the regular one. So normal slider for having the coils out. This is a number eight, this is a number eight zipper, unless I've made a mistake and I'm gonna look foolish now. I'm lining up the teeth so that they're as straight as I can get them. The only tricky part is trying to get both sides inserted far enough into the slider so that they line up correctly and you're, you don't have like a tooth hanging out one way or the other. In some cases it doesn't matter, but so I've got one started on one side. Uh, I don't know how well I can zoom in on, oh, no, this is the reverse slider. This is the regular slider. Maybe you shouldn't listen to me. <laughs> so, all right, so I've got them both more or less equally inserted. I'll get it started and I pretty much nailed it. So let me show you if I do it wrong. Let me get this close up. I apologize if I bump the camera trying to do this. So got my two sides of my zipper. Get one side started and just kind of hold it in place, get the other one in. And if I do it wrong and I get this, so I've got you know two or three teeth hanging out here, then, I mean, the easiest thing to do is start over. To be honest with you, in some applications, you could just trim it smooth and just go on with your life, but it's better to do it right. So, but you just kind of eventually learn how to feel this, get them both about equal, and then boom. And then, oh my gosh, I went too far and I pulled it off. What have I done? This is terrible. Actually, in some applications, it's a good idea to go ahead and do that so that this end is closed, then you can sew this into your project if you don't, you might have something like this sewn into your project where the, the this slider never gets far enough to fully close it. So it's actually a good idea. I'll just, I'll use the other side for demonstration, but zip it all the way, take the slider off. Now this is closed. You can sew this in and then, you know, put the slider in, sew the other in, and uh, it'll be nice and closed on both sides. So again, just stick it in. Oh, I should have said this earlier. If, if you're trying to do this, I don't know why there's a tendency to like try not to open the zipper too much and try to get this in. Just get it, give yourself plenty of slack. Get one end started and the other end and just kind of eye, sorry, it's hard to keep this in camera. <laughs> just eye it so that they're both pretty equal. So now I've got one side too far. Yeah, and then so I've got one tooth, oops. So I've got one tooth out here. So I'll just try it again. So 
So got it pretty even there and then just push it on and it should be perfect. And now I'll do the same thing with the inverted slider. Just like that. And now you see how that would look. You can buy a fixture that you fit the, I think you fit the slider to it and then pull the zipper on and pull it and then locks it on. If, if it's your full-time job to put sliders on zippers, something like that would probably be very helpful, but I have never had this be the thing that's holding me back from finishing a project or something. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, for the hobbyist who, you know, you're maybe putting one or two zippers into a project, you don't need anything like that. So, and now that company's never going to sponsor me. So I want to very briefly talk about sewing a zipper into your project. I'll post a link in the corner to a video I did a couple of years ago about how to finish the raw edges when you sew in zippers. I'm not really going to get into that so much, but this is basically just in case you're watching this and you've you know, maybe never used a zipper and you're intimidated by the process. It's very, very simple. So all zippers consist of the teeth that interlock with one another to open and close. And then the zipper tape, this fabric that it's joined with. And that's the part that you sew into your project. One quick note, sometimes you have to sew across the teeth. Uh, I do things like make zipper extensions so I can sew the project in without having to repeatedly sew across the teeth. But it is common to sew across the teeth. It's usually not any big deal. Normally, as you sew, I like to go nice and slow. Sometimes I'll even hand wheel, but normally the needle will just go right in between the teeth. I'll do that again up close so you can maybe see it a little bit better. But the needle goes right between the teeth Generally, usually the needle will, will deflect a little bit if it needs to. If it's something you're concerned about, you can always hand wheel the machine just to you know, be sure that you don't have an issue, but don't be intimidated by that process. So here I'm just gonna demonstrate sewing the zipper into you know, something like the opening for a bag. I'm just folding one edge under. Uh, you know, let's just, just to make it look really nice and, I'll do a double fold, so this is a finished edge, and again, you can check out the video on a couple of different ways to finish the edge. I like using a vintage machine like this when I'm doing zippers if I can. Uh, this is some pretty heavy Dacron sailcloth. This machine is totally fine for doing that. Uh, I certainly could use my Sailrite Ultrafeed walking foot machine or my industrial walking foot machine. But I like the vintage industrials because they have this really skinny foot. More modern domestic sewing machines or I think industrial non-walking foot machines will have a zipper foot or you know maybe a special narrow foot. Uh, but this one, the foot is just so narrow I don't have to change anything out so I can just keep sewing with it. But what I like to do is I like to place the edge of the fabric pretty close and that's a specific measurement to the teeth. I want enough room for the zipper slider to go back and forth and not hang up on the fabric. Um, there's also circumstances where I would want the fabric to overhang the zipper to provide like a storm flap, you know, but for, for this example, just want to have it, you know, relatively close, not too close and consistent all the way across. And then in this circumstance, I'm just going to sew it in one operation. So I'll top stitch it. Uh, you could also do something like, so this edge down and then flip it over and then top stitch it or even not top stitch it. You get a lot of options, but <clears throat> in this case, I'm just gonna do a double fold and top stitch it right to the zipper tape. And I'm gonna use the presser foot of the sewing machine as a guide against the zipper teeth to keep the stitch line nice and consistent.
One quick bonus tip, uh, if we were gonna be sewing, if you just imagine another panel over here that was gonna enclose this zipper. Before I put both sides on, I do need to remember to put the zipper slider on. And if it's, if I need it to open this way and close this way, I need to put it on now before I sew this on. I cannot tell you the number of times I've had to seam rip a zipper out to put a slider on because I forgot to do it. Um, so you'll probably do it too, just join the club. But uh, if you can remember to put it on beforehand, it's a lot easier. All right, I hope that gives you some helpful information on choosing and using the right zipper for particularly making you know utility bags and that kind of thing. Um, again, you can probably apply this to other uses of other kinds of zipper. There's of course more information uh, than I've presented here, but hopefully this is a good basic primer. If you have questions or comments, please post them in the comments section below and I'll answer them the best I can. And I appreciate you watching. See you next time. By the way, if you think I look different from the last time you saw me, then you're imagining things.